Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which I actually saw the film, surprisingly, I believe a few weeks ago, when I was uh, spending my spring break uh, relaxing and having fun, I actually finally saw the movie that was definitely a popcorn flick that became the highest grossing film to date, and not only that, but it's part of the series. Because it's always fun to watch a monster movie like King Kong in the new movie Kong Skull Island. So in this one, this was more like Apocalypse Now meets uh, King Kong in a way because seeing that this movie is set in the 70s and they're pretty much at war here but they're trying to search to see what's going on over there in this mysterious uh, island as we know it because that's where we finally get to see the big ape of them all calm yeah and yeah no doubt about it this was fun action pack definitely worth your time for only two hours plus you got an all-star cast right there and you just want to have a good time at the movies, and it shows. And as you know, I love King Kong. I grew up watching all of their films uh, ever since. I'm not going for this whole running joke about I grew up with something, okay? No, but it's true. Because it's always fun to watch uh, monster movies, you know, like, King Kong, Godzilla, and all the rest that we had. But King Kong, um, I always remember watching the 1933 original that was black and white and had a lot of great practical effects. It definitely shows that, that a beast like King Kong definitely has feelings. But he also loves to smash things, loves to kill a dinosaur, and he does go after the humans. It could also be a love story as well. And yes, it could be very sad too. Especially after he climbed all the way up to the top of the Empire State Building. Yeah, I know there's like several versions that follow. Even the uh, Mighty Joe Young, which is a different uh, type of movie, but it could be part of the series too. Yeah, both the original and remake. But nevertheless, it's like, man, <laughs> you just can't help but love him so much. I mean, he's definitely the beast right there. Anyway. And I always love all the other series that follow after King Kong, but then there are some disappointments too. In fact, more in particularly, King Kong Lives, which is the worst one of the bunch, in my opinion. Um, I didn't mind the, the 2005 remake uh, with Peter Jackson. I mean, I had some issues with that too. I mean, I think they would have done better with the casting choices of of Jack Black and Adrian Brody. So, but Naomi Watts was good, and I love Kyle Chandler, and I wish there were more to him in the movie, as well as all the other supporting cast that they got. But still, the 1976 remake uh, that uh, Dino De Laurentiis had worked on, but they did several changes. I mean, it. It actually focuses on an oil corporation and all of this happening, plus he climbs on top of the World Trade Center instead of, uh, yeah, Empire State Building in New York. It was also good, but still had some problems. Uh, I still enjoy the cast that they chose and King Kong himself, because this was done with uh, makeup and costume and all of that 
They even got Peter Cullen to do the voice of King Kong in the 1976 version, so it was cool. But I heard that he actually strained his voice. So, yeah, that yeah, that was the one that had um, Jessica Lane, uh, Jeff Bridges, and Charles Grodin. I mean, they did several changes uh, to the story, even though it maintains the same. I love all the ones. I even love uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla. That was a fun movie. No doubt about it. I mean, the beast uh, versus uh, a giant uh, creature. That's right. That's, that's absorbed by nuclear right there. Yeah. But this one is quite different. And, and I really prefer this. But it's definitely right up there with um, the original King Kong and all the other ones. And I guess I can also put this right up with uh, King Kong vs. Godzilla because yeah, they were fun. So let's get to the review. It stars Tom Hiddleston who's been best known for films like The Avengers 4 and Midnight in Paris. Samuel Jackson, always been best known for films like Pulp Fiction, as well as um, many other films that he's been doing in his career. Yeah, even the Snakes on the Plane. <laughs> John Goodman is who has done a lot of good work, including the the Big Lebowski and King Ralph. Uh, Brie Larson from the movie Womb and Trainwreck. Ying Tang. Uh, Ying Taeyong, Toby Cabell, John Ortis, Corey Hawkins, Jason Mitchell, who's been best known for his role in, in Straight Outta Compton and Galaxy Quest, Shea Wickham, Thomas Mann, and John C. Wiley, who's been a lot of stuff, uh, known for films like uh, Chicago, was Eden Gilbert Grape, even Record Ralph. It's written by Dan Gilroy, along with Max Borenstein and Derek Connolly, which is based on King Kong, the series, by Marion C. Cooper and Eager Wallace, and is directed by Jordan Bog Roberts. The movie begins during World War II in 1944. Two fighter pilots, one American named Hank Marlowe, who's soon to be played by John C. Riley, and the other is a Japanese soldier named Gunpai Akari. The two had a dogfight while they parachuted onto an island in the South Pacific until they wound up going near Skull Island where Khan appears and attack one soldier, which of course happens to be Gunpai. In 1973, the U.S. government agent from the Monarch Corporation, Bill Randa, who's played by John Goodman, who hires a British Special Air Service Captain, James Conrad, who's played by Tom Hiddleston, who's a skilled tracker himself. They guide an expedition to map out through a satellite photo what appears to be an island known as Skull Island. So they hire a team, which includes a Vietnam War helicopter squadron Sky Devils that's led by Lieutenant Colonel Preston Packard who's played by Samuel Jackson along with Major Jack Chapman who's played by Toby Cabell and Captain Earl Cole who's played by Shea Wilmham. It also joins in with a photojournalist Mason Weaver who's played by Brie Larson who's also an activist who believes that an expedition is a military operation. So once they arrive over there at Skull Island, it was hired by Houston Brooks, who is a semiologist, who decided to map out the island to see what's going on. By the time they entered around through a ship, which also leads to helicopters, suddenly the air unit gets attacked by Khan, actually killing several of the military soldiers, only leads to two groups who are crash landed between two different areas of the island. So it leads to both 
Packard's team and Conrad's team. Packard's team was was getting ready to search for for Chapman and then the rest of the the group who are survivors or soon to be survived and try to find all the the ammunition that's been hidden somewhere in the island. Well, Conrad's team is trying to find out uh, where they are and not only that but they suddenly bump into several uh, several natives that are running the island and suddenly we get to meet the, the soldier who's, who's now aging, yeah, Hank Marlowe. So then they begin to find out the secret behind the island that's being run by Khan himself because this was his home. It also appears that there's been a lot of giant bugs that are, that are spreading around which includes a giant uh, Daddy Long Legs spider actually killed one of the soldiers and they also had uh, a giant octopus which Khan actually killed and eats and on top of that a giant uh, reptile known as Skull Hunters. So Hank decided to have a plan to actually leave the island by actually rebuilding an old uh, World War II plane in order for them to to get out of the island. But they're still trying to find hope to actually escape before the Skull Hunters uh, go after them and it only gets worse from there well I gotta say I mean this was a fun action pack monster movie that we've been waiting for for a long time and I enjoyed it it definitely has that feel to it and has some likable characters that we got which includes Tom Hiddleston playing the James Conrad, I mean, this is a nice change of pace for him to actually play a hero instead of a villain like he played in uh, the movie The Avengers you know, 4, along with its sequel, you know, when he played Loki. So that's a change of pace right there. Uh, Samuel Jackson did a great job playing Colonel Preston Packard, even though we do get to see a deep down secret behind him at the end. Um, also John Goodman did a great job playing Bill Randa. He, I mean he's definitely an expert and he's trying to find out uh, the expedition that's happening over there at Skull Island. Some history here and also John C. Riley was entertaining. I mean as uh, the soldier who just became a lot older now having to stay there for 29 years in the island, yeah, Hank Marlowe. And I can't say I blame him because he sure definitely knows uh, the entire island after being there. Shows so many creatures that they got over there. And on top of that, <laughs> he just wants to go back home to where he came from. You know, where he just loves to hang around with his family while sitting down, you know, having a drink and while watching a, a Chicago Cubs baseball game from that time. Yeah, um, I mean, that's what he dreamed about all this time, too. So it was fun. Brie Lawson did a great job playing a photographer, which apparently, you know, she does become feisty, and I know she... He basically uh, suddenly repeats uh, Conrad's line, big green cheddar at times. But the entire cast was great, um, no doubt about it, um, give them for what they're doing. It didn't disappoint me at all because it actually shows uh, what happens uh, once you're there at the island. But nevertheless, I mean, Khan definitely gets to fight. He lives. He actually goes after the skull hunters. They are actually much bigger and giant than ever before. The score was. Uh, it does have a wonderful score that's done by Henry Jackman. Did a great job. 
and they even throw in some 70s music which really works the film very well because after all this movie is set in 1973 makes sense definitely had the feel of apocalypse now right there I mean e even when they rebuilt the the plane which they turned into a boat actually resembles to it right there and and so on um, the CGI effects was definitely impressive. I mean, they really did create Khan completely. He almost started to look a little bit like the Khan that we know from the earlier films. So they modernized it very well. And the way they created the creatures that they got in the film was just so impressive. I, this was well made. And also I thought the film was, was entertaining. It was, it was a popcorn flick. Uh, the cinematography was done by Larry Fawn, who, who actually did the cinematography for that You Know What that came out uh, last year called Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, which I did not care for. But this movie, on the other hand, his cinematography was outstanding. It definitely had perfect shots of the entire film. It definitely has the 70s feel to it as we know it. It just looks amazing. The editing was done by Richard Pearson. Edited perfectly too. Um, it's, a, it's a great story to tell. I mean, that's what we want. I mean, we want to have a King Kong movie that's fun, not boring, just entertainment. Right there. I recommend the movie. You'll have a good time. And it's definitely worth watching again and again. So I give the movie Consco Island five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.